quickly. If I don't work, I get depressed and I get inertia and I, oh, my body sort of seizes up. But if I'm working, then it doesn't. So it kind of, ha you know, uh, it, and it creeps up, it creeps up on me. You know, I might do a sex painting and people think it's because I'm thinking about sex. Well, I'm not. Or, or that I've had sex more, and I haven't. You know, they see it as like a diary, where actually it might not be... It's not, a, not necessarily like a diary. It, it's more like a system of thoughts of, of how I work and how I think about life and how I think about things. So I might be thinking, it, it, you know, has, is sex to do with love? You know, is this a connection it, or is it not? Is it something completely separate? Is it, is it lustful? Is it, is it um, you know, void of love? Is pure love nothing to do with sex, maybe? You know? So I might be doing paintings about those ideas and then people might think it's just one-dimensional. But then a lot of people that do think things are just one-dimensional, they're more one-dimensional themselves, so... Sometimes, like, I've got some paintings that I've done when I've been young, younger, like, quite sexual, and I find it it's a bit embarrassing. But, you know, life's embarrassing sometimes, isn't it? What I really want to do is show off and do a really big drawing, but I don't feel like it. So I'm not, I'm not going to... Because what I'll probably do is try to show off and do that, like on this one, and then ruin it and be really angry with myself. I at the moment, I have, I've got these incredible tight deadlines, so I have to be... I have to trust myself. I can see the beginning of the painting, whereas before I couldn't. All I could see before was, like, these wings and this nice blue line or whatever, and everyone would go, oh, that's got really good potential. But, yeah, it did, but not if I did, couldn't do anything with it. And now I'm going to wait wait for this all to dry, and then I'm going to go through my, my mountain pictures, and then I know, I know which one... I think this on my phone. I know which one I want to put in there. And, that, and then I'm going to start, really start, to make it proper and then put the figures in in the bottom of the painting. Hi, Tracy. Hi, what's here? So here, I would also like to show this one, What's actually. this room? Oh, the this plaques. Oh, the plaques. The, exactly. And you want because to put this with the plaques? Yes. Yeah, I think so, because it's... This is great. Yeah. Is... And also, we don't want to... Uh, uh, are these bronze plaques, or are they... They are bronze. bronze. In the old days, I would have a model like this in my studio for about six months, and there'd just be a ball of wool and a packet of Marlboro Light in it or something, or some sellotape, and that would be it. Uh, but actually now, I actually work with the model because it really does help. We are seeing drawings, paintings, sculptures of mine, and we are seeing drawings, paintings of Egan Sheila's. This one we didn't have the last time. These yeah, are it's new nice, ones. Yeah. And it's really nice. I couldn't get the better picture, but it's really fantastic because it's it's a triangle. It's um, his girlfriend, and I think it would also also so this I would think for the last room actually, right? Because of the color, but it's just just a light yellow. You can't show Sheila works all the time because they need to rest. Um, they are very delicate pieces, so especially the pap um, works on paper, they have to be taken care of. So after a show like this, they have to rest for at least five years in a dark room. So it's a really special occasion. occasion. Yeah. See, what's interesting about this, you can even see how, how white mm -hmm. and sparse and minimal it is. Usually when you see a shooter's work, it's always in a context which is really dense. It's kind of brown and buffy and sort of dark and whatever. But this way, we, I've all, you know, I've got so much work, we could present this show in so many different ways. But we're avoiding colour and we're avoiding density. We're trying to make it light. We're trying to raise his work up. And that's the process of curating as well. It isn't just about like what looks good with this or that. It, it's you have you you want to have a, like a, a, a an ethos, a theory behind it, something you want to change. You want to find a way of changing people's perceptions of looking at something.
most artists, they have to spend about 10 days uh, before a show, or a week at least, um, installing their show. And you have a team of people that may arrive probably before you and do kind of like a lot of the heavy work. And then you come and you place everything. And usually before, you, like, you know, you work with the model and you think you know where everything's going to go, but in reality, sometimes those things change. It's all these kind of snags and different things that go on. Look, these are going up now. Now I'm wondering if they're too high. I think they're too high. Too high? Yeah, I think they should go down, be the same. They're at the 150 middle. Yeah, I know meters. they are, but they're not. They're 160. 60, yeah. I think they should. I think they should be down. Number don't 10. You? Yeah, because it's. I really thought that it would look. I thought this would look too low, please. Yeah. But um, I don't think you can see it, can't you? Too. Yeah, they should be lower, shouldn't they? Yeah. So we, should we go out 150, like the others, or further? No. Or do you think 155? I'd go to 150. All oh, right, 150. Good. Yeah. So the, yeah. the, the eye. Yeah. Is okay. Yeah. Like okay. Middle round. All right. Okay. All right. And we can always hide. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But well, I'm right. It's too high. Definitely. You can see it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good timing. Rather you do all of them. All right. Okay. Thank you. So this is like a really like what a problem that an artist has. Well, not many artists because I work in I work in neon. The neon arrives, it's all there, we tested it all, we know it all works, and then when we take it out the crate, a part of it's broke. And it's quite a big break, because it's not even like a fracture, it actually is a break, which is really unusual. This, this room is wrong, this is wrong. I, I really don't like this mm. at all. Yeah, so I either need another one here, or I just need three, or I take one out, or I put something else on this wall. So now, we, the other thing is to actually um, change the dialogue and actually put a Sheila in here, and, and then have a kind of, then have a correspondence between these and the Sheila. Drop the cable all the way down. We can pull it. We can work at this level, and then, if if it, if something goes, we're coming up now. I've worked for Tracy for 20 years. Our first neon was the Tracy Emin Museum in Waterloo. It was her shop in Waterloo, and we had a shop in Spitalfields. And she came in one day, asked for a neon, saying her name in a museum. We laughed about that, and and yeah, that's so worked ever since. Doing more and more. It's been very good. So now we sort of tend to make all our work, deliver it, ship it, install it. That's the sort of, we're doing more and more for the reasons being other people ship it. This happens. Can I just double check with this neon? Because there seems to be major issues getting wires into walls, um, which they're trying to figure it out. But is that imperative that the wires have to no. go through? Kerry knows that. Yesterday, Kerry, yesterday, yesterday we agreed. What? We agreed yesterday that if there was a problem, would the wires come on the outside? There's not a problem. There's only this, this, this stuffing and metal up to that point. Yeah, and we agreed that if there was a problem with the wires, then we'd, we'd have them on the outside. I, I don't want to know about those kind of electrical problems. Filmed. Yes, oh, it right is, then. Kerry, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> problem, no problem. There's no problem, yeah. <laughs> I was going to swear. You've got a cut. <laughs> So these are some of my fav favourite work, but you can't, it's very hard to see because you can't.
I whisper to my past, do I have another choice? They're kind of like um, a love story in a way. And I, I, these, these are some of my favourite works forever and ever and ever, you know. And the humiliated with the swan. Is there's a, a Thomas Mann book called The Black Swan. And it's about a woman who falls in love with someone that's like, she's 50. And she falls in love with someone that's about 26, 25. And her period is stopped. She's gone through a menopause. But when she falls in love with this young guy, her, she starts bleeding again and her stomach starts to swirl and she's just convinced that she's um, becoming fertile again and that she can get pregnant and that she's, like, she's becoming young because of her love for him. But actually, within two months, she dies of, of cancer of the cervix. And that's what it's about. And um, I made this in terms of being 50 and being a woman and constantly feeling humiliated for one reason or another. But also it's very witty to have one swan with the word humiliated. It's quite tough. Here she's looking at this wall. Yeah, no, I liked it here the other way. There. Yeah, and here we're looking at her There's when we come in, yeah. Exactly. I think the other way. It was fine for me to to uh, look at the images and choose them before the show, the Sheila ones, but actually looking at them and being that close and then looking at my work, you have a completely different response to it. Yeah, it's much better that way, much, much better. The opportunity to work with Tracy Emin and Egon Schiele, I mean, both are almost 100 years apart, but still their feelings and their artistic expression has the same intensity and the same um, candor. And I think this is really the most intense part for me. I'm feeling so relieved completely relieved. This show, the whole thing has been a risk and it wasn't until we'd done all the lighting that I felt much more confident about it. Um, but always as an artist you should be taking risks, you shouldn't rest on your laurels, you've got to push things a little bit. I can't just keep making art and making images, I need to know why I'm doing it and where it's coming from, I need to be really pushed and empowered and, and working with the Schiller work so closely has empowered me, I loved it. I feel that um, I'm having a lot more fun with what I'm doing and I'm more excited and more engaged, definitely, because it's, I'm, I've got some ambition about my vocation and about creativity. Catch up on all five episodes of the BBC iPlayer exclusives Private View, available now on BBC iPlayer. Next tonight, desperate to escape the bohemian poverty of their father and stepmother, two British sisters vie for the affections of a pair of dashing Americans. Tonight's movie, 